Welcome to Sharky's Gaming Controllers. I'm Sharky, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at a controller that was actually requested by one of my Ultra members on my Gaming Controller Collection photos. So we're gonna take a look at this Real Play Puzzle Sphere controller for PlayStation 2. So let's first take a look at this packaging. So this is the box here. So first off, you can see it's a blister pack style packaging. Uh, you can see the game just there, Real Play Puzzle Sphere. The controller as well as its USB receiver and there's some text just around it and the text just says tilt the sphere to navigate this roller coaster ride and of course it's got some screenshots here of the game and it also says includes wireless real play motion sensing tilt controller flipping it over on the back here you've got some text in different languages there is some English down here and this just says the only puzzle game to come with its own unique wireless controller Tilt the puzzle sphere to navigate this roller coaster ride with breathtaking jumps, death defying drops, and nerve wracking mountain paws. A unique combination of puzzle platform and racing gameplay. Motion sensing puzzle action for one to four players. 36 stunning courses across six environments. Practice arcade, time trial, and two to four player time attack modes. Experience virtual vertigo as you race hundreds of meters above ground, spiraling through man made and natural landscapes. And of course, yeah, it's got some more screenshots there of the game. And it's also got this image here of these people obviously playing puzzles here. And I don't know why this woman needs to stand on one leg to tilt a motion controller, but apparently that's advertising for you. Um, I don't know. They all have really strange, very over-exaggerated expressions. Over on this side, it also shows the contents of this packaging. And also down here it says one to four players and it also says memory card for PlayStation 2 required. So once you pull out everything from the box, this is what you get. You of course get the real play Puzzle Sphere game for PlayStation 2. So that's the front of the cover there, the back, and the description here is the exact same that was on the packaging, same with the screenshots and images got the game inside and a manual as well. Now the manual is pretty basic, it essentially just goes through um, how you set it up with your PlayStation 2, game options, using the controller, game modes, the pointing out the game screen and of course the product support and it just goes into different languages again. And that's the back showing the real play line of controllers. Now of course you also get the real play puzzle sphere controller with a wrist strap as well so you can hook it around your wrist and you also get the USB receiver. So now let's take a look at the real play puzzle sphere controller itself. So first off this is a wireless controller. It connects to your PlayStation 2 console using this USB receiver which is quite simple it's got the real play logo down the bottom here, USB connection at the top, and of course this plugs into the USB port of your PlayStation 2 console. And on the back here, it just says real play puzzle sphere. So pretty basic receiver. And the controller itself is completely round, so it's a round sphere, as you can see. It's very simplistic colors, just the silver and black. It looks really nice though. Now on the bottom here, you've got a wrist strap. This is to connect to your wrist, so you don't accidentally throw this while you're playing and break your TV. So it just attaches like that, that way it's secure, and you just hold it in your hand. Now, of course, this is a wireless controller, so it is powered by batteries. This takes two AAA batteries, and you access it using this back panel here, which you do need a Phillips screwdriver to do so. So just open it up, install those two AAAs, and you're ready to start playing. Now on the front here is where all the functions are and you can see it's pretty basic. It doesn't really have too much to it. So to start, you've got a logo here again of the real play at the top there. Just below that, you've got a D-pad. And this D-pad is quite small and it is very hard to press. It's quiet though, it doesn't make too much sound. But yeah, it is very hard to press and because it's so small, that tends to make it a little bit even harder to actually press the right one. It is very easy to accidentally press it. Um, you meant to press the left one and you end up pressing the top one or vice versa down the bottom here. 
So it's just really easy to press the wrong, um, the wrong side of it. Now just below this D-pad, you've got two buttons with an LED indicator. The LED indicator will light up blue when you sync this up to your PlayStation 2 console. And the two buttons are quite simple. So it's green and red. So these press down quite easily. They're not really hard to press. Uh, the green one is what you're going to be using the most. Uh, the red one you're not going to be using as much. It's just sort of for pausing, back button, that type of stuff. So this one you won't be using that much at all. With a green one you'd probably be using all the time. Now of course this also has motion sensing abilities. So essentially in the game you use this to tilt and control. So you would tilt left to turn left, tilt right to turn right, tilt forward to turn fo go forward, and tilt backwards to go backwards. Now of course it also has speed. So the more you tilt in a direction, the faster you go. So if you only tilt a little bit, you'll start to go slowly. But if you really tilt, you'll start to pick up speed. So basically how much you tilt and also in which direction you tilt, it detects in the game. Now holding this while you're doing this is quite easy. You just hold it like you would hold a ball. Your thumb will be hovering over these controls here. Essentially, you can press everything quite easily, but because you'll probably be pressing the green button as much, in the game, you may need to use your other hand to use a D-pad, and I'll explain why in just a second. But mostly, most of these things you would do one-handed. You just tilt to control and press the buttons, and it's quite comfortable to do that. It's um, not really uncomfortable to hold. It just feels like you're holding a small ball. Now, how do you actually play with this? Well, in the game, you control this thing called a Zorb, which is basically like a steel-looking ball that you kind of roll around these different courses. Now, of course, using the motion controls, you use your directional controls. So again, turning left, right, forward, and back. So you use those motion controls to adjust that. Then you use the D-pad here to mostly adjust your camera. The top um, D-pad D -pad up is just an overview where the left and right are turning your camera left and right. The bottom of the D-pad, uh, D-pad down, just uses your abilities, which you pick up in the game. So there's little abilities like air break and anchor and stuff like that that you pick up, and you trigger it by pressing D-pad down. Now the buttons here are quite simple in functions. In functions. The red one won't be used as much. The red essentially will pause your game, also go back in menus where the green one will be like accept or continue in menus, as well as a break. Now, when you hold this down to use as your break, you also have finer movements. So when you're holding down the break button, you can move a lot more slowly, which does help in the more precise sections of the track. And you're gonna be relying on this break quite often um, because you really need to slow down to actually be able to make turns and basically find your way through a level. So you'll be using this button the most out of everything. So you'll be having your thumb around this one quite often and having that finer motion control really helps when you're trying to navigate a level. So does this actually work? And the answer is yes, it does, mostly. So the motion controls actually work when you tilt the sphere, your absorb in the game will tilt and move accordingly. The problem is there's a slight delay between when you tilt the controller and when the game reacts to that control. So you'll be going there, I'll say, okay, I need to turn here. You'll tilt your controller, and by the time the games react, you think, oh, I need to turn the other way. And so you turn the other way, and again, there's that delay. That delay can cost you in this game, because this, this game is basically a physics-based puzzle game that you need to do quite precise things with. So essentially, what you end up doing is abusing this brake button, this green button here that controls your brake. You'll be pressing this down quite regularly, and the thing is with pressing this button down is it gets tiring after a while. It will give you that precise control that you need. You hold this down, you make those precise tunnel cons, and you sort of can counteract that delay and not oversteer too much. But by pressing down this button, your thumb will get quite sore after playing this for quite some time because uh, you just need that break to sort of edge your way through the level. There's just no other way of it. Now, you also find when you're playing this, because you're oversteering sometimes quite a bit, you'll feel it in your wrist. So you'll feel it right here in your wrist after a while. 
So if you're playing this for more than an hour, you probably want to take a break, maybe every hour and just go back to it, um, not only for your thumb, but also your wrist. It just might help you a little bit because it can get a bit uncomfortable after long play sessions. Now, even though there's a delay and even though you have to use this break button to get through it, this game is more than playable. It can be quite enjoyable if you look past those motion controls. So you just kind of got to forgive the motion controls a bit and sort of use that break and just work your way through the level as best you can. And it can be enjoyable. The game itself is just like a simplistic puzzle game and sometimes playing a simplistic puzzle game can be quite nice. But the thing is when the game starts to get difficult, so when you start getting into later levels, that's when it gets really frustrating because you need that precise control to get through the level. So holding the brake and turning very ed edging your way through the level. But then you've got these huge jumps which you need speed for. And the problem is you just need that precise control, but then you need to do the speed on top of that. And with the controls having that slight motion, motion sensing delay, it makes it incredibly difficult. So I don't think it's impossible to get good at this game. You probably could get good at this game, but it will be a frustrating process and it'll make the game quite difficult just because of that extra you know, motion control functionality. And this controller only works with this game and the game can't use anything but the Sphere controller. So essentially, you can get good at this game, you can enjoy this game, but it may be a frustrating process, and it depends on how much you enjoy this game, it might not be even worth playing. So it, it comes down to how much you like these kind of physics-based um, puzzle games, and if you can stand that motion controls for long periods of time. If you played it for a little bit each day, you might not feel it as much, but then again, when you get to those higher levels, you might feel it straight away. So it's it's sort of conflicting because it is a cool controller. It does work in the game, but it just that delay really affects it a lot. And I think even if the delay wasn't there, when you use the motion controls, when you tilt in a direction, sometimes you go so fast that you don't even know that you've gone off the track before you've gone off the track. So I think even if the delay wasn't there, you need that more precise motion controls to be able to successful at this game, which this controller does not give you. So it is playable, and with this controller, it does sort of make the game more enjoyable, but at the same time, it also makes the game more frustrating. But you know, my words can only tell you so much. So let's now have a look at some gameplay.
overall, this is a very cool and unique controller. If you can look past those motion controls with their slight delay and give the game a chance, you can find some enjoyment here. The game itself may be a simple puzzle game, but it's still quite enjoyable, and the controller definitely helps to make it a little bit more enjoyable. The controller, it's kind of cool just to move it around and use those motion controls to control your Zorb in the game. And of course, it also lets you down at the same time because in later levels, when the game starts ramping up its difficulty, the frustrating motion controls will really start to eat away at you and you will start to feel them more and more, especially when those levels require you to make jumps and more precise and more speedy kind of movements. But you know what? It's still a cool controller. Even though the motion controls aren't perfect and kind of let the game down, it's still a cool and unique controller. And of course, this controller is designed for this game. It does not work with any other game, and this game can't be played without this controller. So as a package, it's a unique package to begin with. So if you're a collector, then this is definitely something that should be in your collection. It's really unique and different, and of course, those are the best type of controllers to collect. I really enjoy having this. It's quite cool. And even though it's not perfect, I still found enjoyment with playing this game. So anyway guys, that was the Real Play Puzzle Sphere controller. If you enjoyed this video, then uh, please hit that like button as it really helps out a lot. Feel free to subscribe as I'll have heaps more gaming controllers up very shortly. While you're at it, hit that notification button and share this with your friends. And if you would like to support the channel, then click the join button down below and become a channel member. You'll get monthly perks and of course the extra support really means a lot to me. It really helps me out. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.